dive into our series, uh, we are talking about securing the bag. What's that mean? Here's the slang terminology. All right, slang terminology uh, is this. Uh, it is acquiring or keeping something of value. Acquiring or keeping something of value. How many of you would say that money is valuable? All right, it's okay to say that. Don't be super stuffy or super religious or super weird. Money is valuable and it's important. And the kingdom of God is advanced uh, by resources. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about this next week, three and four. I'm going to get really practical week three and four. Uh, however, uh, the love of money is the root of all evil, not money in and of itself. So we're teaching you how to secure the bag, how to do well financially. That's what this series is about. And uh, I, I really just want you to understand that when you get your finances in order, so many other areas of your life come into order. Do you understand that? That's why we're doing this, because I can't talk about sex and relationships and marriage and all these other things and then also not hit on money. Do you understand that? Okay, so all of it matters. All of it. So, uh, with that said, uh, I am uh, I'm thrilled to bring you week two, uh, and uh, I'm, 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 I would say this message is brought to you by Kanye West. <laughs> You've been under a rock uh, if you haven't seen or heard all the things happening in his life. And everybody who's stuffy about it and kind of rude about it, you need to get over yourself in Jesus' name. Because at one point you were kind of lost and, and I know you're perfect now and you're not going through any level of discipleship or sanctification. Uh, and I know that when you get saved, you're automatically totally, completely whole, pure and clean. And so you'll never need work or never need judgment or never need anybody to pray for you. But he needs a little bit of that. So maybe offer him a little grace, and a little bit of prayers and let us celebrate what God's doing in the earth. Whether it's whatever happens, man, I'm, I'm, I'm praising God for the thousands of people who are being open to the gospel that weren't previously. But, uh, you know, the, one of my favorite tracks on the project is on God. And, and <laughs> I love some of the, the words. If I can read you some of my favorite words, I won't rap them as much as you would like me to. But I have a history, you know. You didn't know me before I was saved. I had all the tattoos on my eyes removed, okay? Was that too far? Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> I love he goes, how you get so much favor on your life? Single mothers got my heart. I love that. Uh, he said, they had me chasing statues. That was my pride. Come on, somebody. Uh, when I thought the book of Job was a job. <laughs> we're like, oh, so that's not, okay. <laughs> life, gone, life gone have some lows and some highs. You like how I'm reading this? I'm really, I'm really for the culture here. Um, I, I thought this was interesting, and so I want to go today. He goes, the IRS want they 50 plus our tithe. Man, that's over half the pie. I felt dry. That's on God. <laughs> but Kanye got it together here in this song. Right, like he, I just it's fascinating that in a rap song in 2019, he's talking about tithing, and that's what I want to talk about today. So, I want you to look at your neighbor and I want you to tell him Kanye got it right. It's on God. Come on, tell somebody, look at every location. <laughs> so, that's the title of my message today on God and uh, secure the bag week two on God. Again, week three and four, I'm going to get really, really practical, okay? But today, before I go there, I need you to teach, I need to teach the why of the 10%, okay? Here, here's what it means, okay? The 10%, you hear this a lot, and I'm going to be a Bible teacher today. I'm going to be less of a preacher as I was last week. I'm going to be a Bible teacher today. Um, we talked about last week, right, that God's our source. I mean, you got to listen to last week, right? It's in the bag. God's got this. All right. And he does. And the result is on God. But here's what I want you to know about tithing, because you hear it all the time. And I want to clear up some misconceptions today. Okay. God will do way more with our 90% than we could ever do with our 100%. When we give our first, the rest is on God. Period. The end. Now, I want to make 
four quick statements before we get into the message. Here's number one. The tithe is not mandatory for you to be a part of this church. I want to be clear. Everybody see that so we don't get emails later that we have to respond to with the four statements? God bless you. Number two, the tithe is a great place to start, but it's not a goal to reach and stop. Okay. It's a great place to start. It's a great place to go. Uh, But the New Testament is the law of grace, which means the standard is even higher. And I can go even further. All right, number three, uh, the tithe is on me, but the result is, it's what? It's on God. And then number four, uh, the tithe is on me. Oh, actually, that's not true. They missed it. But let me read you number uh, three. That may have been my fault, okay? Or number four, uh, the tithe is God's practical plan to fund his church and provide for those in need. Okay, that's his practical plan to fund his church and provide for those in need. So those four statements I want you to have in your mind before we dive in to this language about the tithe. Now, here's the first thing I'll say. Okay, I'm going to give you three points today. Number one, tithing is a test of the heart. Tithing is a test of the heart. Now, uh, this is this point is really part two of last week. You understand that it's part two. Uh, But I want to read a popular scripture in a moment. But before I do, let me help you understand what the tithe means. It means a tenth. And the number 10 in the scriptures is testing. That's what it represents. So let me walk you through a few. Okay. Why does God uh, ask us to tithe? Well, it's a heart thing. But also, I believe a percentage is fair to everyone. It's fair to everybody, no matter where they're at in their spiritual journey or where they're at on their economic journey. It's fair. Now, when you see 10 in the Bible, it represents testing. 10 plagues, 10 commandments, 10 times God tests Israel in the wilderness. Jacob's wages were changed 10 times. The 10 virgins in Matthew 25, Daniel tested and fast. 10 days, right? I mean, I just keep going on and on. You see 10 as a test in the scriptures. Now, I want to give you a popular scripture, the most popular, and I'm going to give you a ton of scripture today, but the most popular scripture that many people would say, it's Old Testament, it's law, it doesn't matter, right? It's not relevant. And it's important for me to start here because that is an argument that people use a lot of times. However, how many times do we use the Old Testament for leadership principles? How many times do we use the Old Testament to say, oh, it reveals Jesus? How many times do we use the Old Testament and the Proverbs and the Psalms to guide us? So we can't just throw the Old Testament out just because we're reading something we don't like in the Old Testament. I thought I wasn't preaching today. So let's go to a popular passage in Malachi. Let's start there. The scriptures say, for I am the Lord, I do not change. So proving my point that God doesn't change. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same tomorrow. His love increases, but his love towards you and even in your sin does not change. It's still massive and great. Whether you are wandering or full of sin, God still loves you the same good news. But remain faithful to my covenant with you, and that is why you, O sons of Jacob, have not come to an end. In other words, I haven't smite you because I love you. Keep going. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statutes and ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you. In other words, take a faith step, and I'll meet you more than halfway, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob God? That's what God says. Will a man rob God? Intense language. Now, before I keep reading, I want you to know something, that there's a lot of grace in regards to some of this, because so many of us are on the beginning of our spiritual journey. But for those particularly and especially who have been walking with God and know the scriptures and know the love of God, will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? And God says, in tithes and offerings, which are two separate things, by the way, you have withheld. You are cursed with a curse. For you are robbing me. This whole nation bring all the tithes the tenth, into the storehouse. The storehouse is the local church. It is the one place that you are committed and planted to. That is what that represents. So that there may be food in my house. In other words, supply for the ministry and for the people in need. 
and test me now. God says, test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no more room to receive it. How many want some overflow in your life? You thought that was just a 2018 thing, but God's still in the business of overflow. Hey, one more. Then I'll rebuke the devourer, the enemy, insects, plagues for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruits of the ground, nor will your vine in the field drop its grapes before harvest, says the Lord of hosts. Okay. Again, I want to start here because I think it's important, and the writer uses... Two words that are really important, my statutes and my ordinances. And he says, you've gotten away from these ordinances. Really what that language or that word means is ordinary behavior. And what was happening is the people of God, God was literally saying, you're robbing me because the 10th, the beginning of it is mine. So what God's concerned about here is not the amount or the money because God has it all. He's saying, you're, you're missing out on offering your heart to me and it's affecting every other area of your life. See, tithing puts life and things in order. It puts your heart first and then it organizes everything else. In other words, tithing is ordinary behavior of the believer to thank God for whatever we have. Listen, tithing tests the heart more than it tests the account in your bank. I'll say that again. Tithing tests the account of the heart more than it tests the account in your bank. It's a heart test. That's really the start. My son, the most important thing in his life right now are toys. It's the most important thing, okay? And uh, a lot of us, we have different things that are the most important thing to us. Relationships, paying the mortgage, our family, right? These are the most important things. Now, my mother-in-law, God bless her, she got him a backpack for his toys, amen? So that when we play, we can put stuff away, or when we go to somebody else's house, we can take them. Thank you, mother-in-law, okay? But what, what was happening in the beginning is it would be time for a bath or we'd be going to bed or somewhere else. And I'm like, Maverick, we got to put the toys away. Well, there was a fear that if we put the toys away, they wouldn't be there when we got back. Bro, I'm your dad. Trust me. The last thing I want is for you to be whining and crying over toys like I got you. But it was a practice of time for him to every night or before we go somewhere. See, we're about to go somewhere and play with the toys. But to transport them before they get lost or damaged, they got to go in the bag. Right? And so the thing is, I'm like, son, if you want to play with what's in the bag, you first have to secure the bag. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, I'm like, son, listen, you got to trust me. I, I, I love you. And like, I want you to be happy. And I would sacrifice my happiness. I would sacrifice my comfort. I would sacrifice everything I care about and love so that you would be taken care of, i.e. Jesus. I would do, wait, you're the most important thing to me. But trust me, trust me that I got your heart. Trust me. And so every time Maverick puts his toys in the bag, it's a trust that daddy and son have a heart connection. And when we get there, every single time, everything he put in the bag is there. And when he's compliant, I always want to give him more because I can trust him to be chill and I can trust him, right, that there's a heart connection there. This is tithing. It's, it's okay, I'm gonna give, dad, right, right now, dad, what's most important to me in the world is these Toy Story figurines. We got Woody Sr. and we've got Woody Jr. and we've got Baby Woody and we've got Buzz Sr. and, right, you understand? Like, these are the most important things in his life. But it takes faith and trust and dad that when I put it in here, it's gonna be there when I get back. And that's exactly what we're doing with tithing. It's a heart thing. That like if God, if you trust me, remember this is mine anyway, I bought it for you. And like if you trust me with it, like it will be here. I'll, I'll take care of all of your needs according to my riches and glory. It's a hard thing. Now, now the writer says something that I think is challenging. And again, there's a lot of grace here. And there are so many people in our church who are just beginning their spiritual journey. So I want to be gentle. I don't want to be careful. But I also always want to give you the whole thing. Okay. The writer says, you're robbing me. 
God's saying to his people, you're robbing me, and when you're robbing me, I can't cover you and protect you. There's actually a curse on your resources because you're keeping what's mine, and therefore that's thievery. That's intense language. And some of you are like, oh, no, well, the, the curse was broken. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. It was all broke on the tree. Yeah, but you can't live any way you want, right? And then expect God's blessing and favor on your life. Yeah, the curse was broken. But like, listen, if you're married and you keep putting yourself in situations and positions to cheat on your spouse and hanging out with somebody by yourself late at night or doing things like that, like, like you're putting a curse on your marriage because you're opening yourself up for opportunities to lose. And the thing I'm saying is, is that our finances are susceptible to the world's curse. When we are obedient, God redeems our finances from under the curse of a fallen society and broken humanity. But listen, we often, we often voluntarily make our lives and our finances vulnerable to unwanted attacks. Voluntarily. When we don't say, God, you have all of my heart. See, all of me starts with the beginning of my heart. Where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. It starts with the heart. Tithing is a test of the heart. Do you trust me? Do you, when you put it in the bag or the bucket, do you trust that I'm going to take care of you? And like, there is great blessing for those who are faithful. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I'm telling you, you can't find a tither. I mean, very, very few instances that I've come across in my 15 or 16 years of full-time vocational ministry where people who are tithers, God isn't providing for them. I cannot even, I mean, very, 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 very few instances that I just, I can't, can't even think of because God takes care of those whose heart he has. I'm not saying that things won't happen, difficult, but God's looking. Can I trust you because I have your heart? Tithing is a test of the heart. Are you with me so far? Yes. Now again, God bless us, but that's not the focus. What I would rather have is people who love God and say, God, you can have my heart, then God, I'm giving so that I can get a blessing. That's not why we give. We give because we want to see the kingdom of God active on earth. Man, I wish I had more time. I'd just preach forever. But I'm Bible teaching today, okay? All right, here's the second thing, right? Tithing is a test of the heart, but it's also, it's, it, tithing is not law, it's love. Yeah. It's not law, it's love. I'm going to prove it to you. We see tithing all throughout the Bible, including both the Old and the New Testament. The Old and the New Testament. Adam and Eve in the garden, right? Eat not the tree. It's representative of the tithe. Cain and Abel, bring your offering, your best. That's 2,500 years before the law. Bring your first fruits. Abraham gave to Melchizedek 10%, 500 years before the law. Jacob tithe 400 years before the law. The writer of Proverbs 3, 9, 100 years after the law. So when people say that tithing is only Old Testament, it's not. And I'm going to keep proving it to you. Let's go to Genesis though for a moment. Genesis chapter 14, verse 19. And Melchizedek, and we'll talk about him in a moment, blessed Abraham and said, blessed, joyful, favored, be Abram by God most high creator and possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed, praised, and glorified be God most high, who has given your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of all the treasure he had taken into battle. Okay, so Abraham, Abram, again, 500 years before the law, before even Malachi or this concept was written, Abram gives Melchizedek a tenth. Now, who is Melchizedek? I think that's important for us to understand. Uh, there is actually no genealogy to whom he is. Let's go to the scriptures, Hebrew chapter uh, 7. The Bible says, without any record of father or mother, nor ancestral line, without any record of beginning of days, birth, nor ending of life and death, but having made, been made like the Son of God, he remains a priest without interruption and without successor. 
Now, why do I share that? Because here's the thing. Abraham or Abram was actually showing us that the tithe actually goes to Jesus. Because Melchizedek, the theologians, many Bible scholars, many thought leaders believe that he was not just a type and shadow of Jesus, but he was an appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. And before a law was ever established, Abram was giving the first of his increase to Jesus, a tenth. Now that's fascinating, and it's also breaking for those who believe that tithing is just Old Testament. It's not, because Jesus shows up in the Old Testament to receive it. Now let me take this even further, and let me make this broad statement, and let me go over here to make it. When you give your tithe, you're actually giving to Jesus, not man or a man's institution. Listen, tithing is giving to God through the storehouse, the local church. I'll prove it. Hebrews 7, 8, the next verse. Here on earth, mortal men receive tithes, but there he, Melchizedek, or Jesus, receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. That's a pretty fascinating scripture. Look at this. Here, mortal men, so in other words, when you pay online or when you write your check or when you give in the offering or whatever you do, right here on earth, Mortal men are collecting it, but when you're in a healthy local church that you can trust, that is being faithful and stewarding the resources and helping people and meeting the needs of the widows and orphans and doing what the church is meant to do, actually that goes right to heaven yeah. and right to Jesus. So firstly, make sure you're in a local church where the finances are transparent and honest. Yeah. And secondly, you, you do want to have an element of trust. Now, we're not here to dictate, and leaders are not here to pander. We have a calling and an instruction. However, you have to understand that when you're giving to, you're not really giving to, you're giving through. That's the point of the tithe. It's trust. Now, I want to ask you something. If Jesus asked you to tithe, would you do it? If Jesus said, because I know it's, it's, old, oh, it's an Old Testament, it's love. But if Jesus asked you, would you do it? I mean, because that's who I'm here to please. Well, let's look at Matthew. Jesus talking, and he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. In other words, you religious folks that put demands on people and don't live it yourself. For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin. Those are, those are spices. And have neglected the weightier matters of the law justice, mercy, and faith. These you ought to have done without, say that word with me, without leaving the others undone. So Jesus is going, listen, listen, like if you give your tithe, but you're an arrogant jerk and you don't care about people, like now you're just religious and now you're using it as a way to ruin God's name and the church. And that's important for you to note, please hear that, that a lot of times what happens in churches and church boards is people, they give like they're at a country club, and now they think that they get to dictate and tell what to do, where it should go. There's an arrogance that comes with it, and that's not how it should be. If we're neglecting love and justice and mercy, man, we're wasting. But Jesus is going, I would say tithe, but also, in addition to that, participate and see the kingdom come. See, tithing, it's a test of the heart, right? But it's not law, it's love. Because when we give back to God what's his, we see him make the work happen in the kingdom. See, this is the idea, this is the principle. Here's the last thing I would say, that tithing is what's first, not what's left. I want to be clear about that. It's what's first. It's not what's left. And before we go on and before we conclude, I'll be very clear with you about something. Again, this is not a mandatory thing, mandatory thing for you to come to this church. This is an opportunity for you to show God love, for you to experience blessing and covering and protection in your finances, for you to see the kingdom of God at work at its highest form through you. 
This is an opportunity for you to see miracles in your life. And I dare you to participate. I've been tithing since I was in eighth grade. And I've never seen God not come through. Eighth grade, I remember my first paycheck. I worked one hour (laughs) somewhere. And I remember I got like $8.38. And I I was like, mom, I'm supposed to do something with this, right? I can't figure out the details of that math. But God still came through. I mean, I'm just telling you, man, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. (laughs) Ever. But to secure the bag, you've got to release your heart. See, tithing, listen, tithing is not, is what's first, not what's left. Tithing puts things in order. Now, I want to be clear. Jesus said, in this life, you will have trouble. But wouldn't you rather things be in order when you experience trouble and challenges? Wouldn't you? It's first, not what's left. Now, I want to make a statement. Tithing, actually, I want to clear this up, is not giving. It's actually returning. It's a return of the first for the redeeming of what's left. It ties into what I said in the beginning, that God can do way more with your 90% than you can do with your 100%. Giving is above and beyond the tithe. Now, we'll keep using the language giving because it's most able for us to catch and understand. But when you're tithing, you're actually not giving. Here's what giving is. Giving is above and beyond your 10%. Giving is when we're looking at something like a nonprofit or a parachurch ministry or something beyond or someone, if something touches your heart and you're going to a homeless or something, right? Giving is above and beyond. In fact, December 15th, we will practice sacrificial giving where we will receive an offering that's above and beyond our tithe so that we can plant a new church in a new community in Passiunk. Do you understand that tithing is returning above and beyond giving is for the kingdom? When you tithe, you're actually taking care of your location, your local storehouse. But when you're giving, you're building the kingdom. We're also going to launch a very special project, and I'll tell you about it on January 5th. That's going to blow your mind. I can't wait, but I can't tell you until Vision Sunday. We're also going to meet needs, Christmas needs, people in our church who have Christmas needs. If you have a Christmas need, please let us know. That's what this offering will do. So tithing, it's not actually giving. It's returning God what's God's. Now, I want to take us to a clip of a sermon that I think is fascinating, and I might use a clip of his at some point, but this will stir your heart, and I believe that it gives us the concept of why tithing is first, not what's left, and I think it will really speak to us, and this is how I'll conclude today. Hey, let's take that clip away. It says, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, consecrate to me all the firstborn." Whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. It is mine. It belongs to me. I wish that I could adequately explain to you how emphatic the language is in the Hebrew here, this phrase, it is mine. It is my property. It belongs to me. To me, I'm the owner. It's extremely emphatic. It's very important to understand that when we talk about the principle of first. The firstborn, he says, belongs to me. Okay, now look at verse 12. That you shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb. That is, every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have, the males shall be the Lord's. Very similar language in the Hebrew, shall belong to God. They'll be the Lord's. But every firstborn, now we'll talk about this, of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Very important. A donkey will be redeemed with a lamb. Now watch this phrase. And if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. It's very important to understand that if you don't redeem it, you're going to lose it anyway. And I want you to apply that as we talk about the first of our finances, the first 10%. He says, if if you don't bring it to me, you're going to lose it. You're still going to lose it. It's going out of your account. He, he, he gives us the donkey and the lamb, okay? The donkey represents unclean animals, and the lamb represents clean animals. So how do you know which to do? Well, if it's a clean animal, it has to be sacrificed, the firstborn. 
If it's an unclean animal, it has to be redeemed with the sacrifice of a clean. Let me say that one more time. If it's clean firstborn, I'm hoping you kind of get ahead of me on this and understand what this represents. If it's a clean and it's firstborn, it has to be sacrificed. If it's unclean, it has to be redeemed with the sacrifice of a clean. Okay. Well, how in the world does this relate to us today? Well, let me ask you two, two questions, all right? First of all, were you and I spiritually born clean or unclean? In other words, when we were born in the natural, our spiritual state before God, were we born into this world, were we clean or unclean? Unclean. We were all born in sin, right? I can prove it by simply asking the experts here, the parents, did you have to teach your children to be bad? <laughs> or did that come naturally for them? See, we have to teach them to be good. Is that right? Because we're all born with a sin nature. That's, that's what the Bible says, all right? So we were all born unclean. Was Jesus born unclean or clean? Clean. Okay, listen to me. Listen very carefully. The clean, Jesus, the clean had to be sacrificed so that the unclean could be redeemed. That's what we just read. <laughs> That's how important this principle is. And we're going to see that this principle refers to tithing, but I want to say something to you that maybe you've never thought of. Jesus is God's tithe. Because you see, you give the tithe first. You don't pay your bills and see if you have enough left over to tithe. You give the tithe first. It's the first 10%. It's not just 10%. It's the first 10% because it takes faith to give the first. See, God said, when your sheep has a lamb, give me the first one. It takes faith to give the first one before you have any more. You don't know if the sheep's going to produce anymore. That takes faith. God didn't say, wait until your sheep has 10 and then give me one of them and you can give me the one that keeps getting in your garden that you don't like. No, he said, you give me the first one before you have any others. See, so many people think it's not the 10% that enacts the blessing, it's the faith that enacts the blessing. So it shall be when your son asks you in time to come, saying, what is this? Okay, in other words, he's saying one day your son's going to ask you, why are you killing these animals? that you shall say to him, by strength of hand, by a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go, that the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all males that open the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. Okay, I want you to, let's just bring this up to modern day. Let's think about this. The son uh, goes away to college. He gets his degree. He comes back. His dad says, hey, one of the things I like you to do is take over the books. And so one day the son is sitting in there and he's got the books in front of him. Dad comes in from the field and the son says, uh, dad, um, uh, sit, sit down, dad. Uh, you know, you asked me to, you know, take over the books and uh, the business and all. And dad, I'm, 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 I've been going over the books and... Um, Dad, um, I, want, I want to talk to you about something, man. Um, you might not even know you do this. You know, Dad? Uh, we all have blind spots, you know? So, not accusing you, just, just talking numbers now. Um, but, Dad, um, e every time uh, one of our animals has a, a firstborn, you, um, how shall I say this, uh, kill it. And uh, Dad, uh, I think it's getting out of hand uh, with you because you, you, you killed 72 animals last year. And um, um, we're, we're in the ranching business, Dad. And uh, th th this is cutting into our profits. So wh wh why do you do that? He said, one day your son's going to ask you. And he said, when he asks you, you say to your son, son, um, I need to tell you something about our family that you don't know. 
But we weren't always in the ranching business. We, we did not own animals. We didn't own land. Son, we were slaves. We were in bondage. But God, with a mighty hand, redeemed us and gave us everything we have now. Therefore, we gladly give to God the firstborn of all of our increase. Now, this was written 4,000 years ago. And this principle happened to me. Uh, when Josh was kind of getting old enough to understand numbers and all, and he has this mathematical mind like I do and like his grandfather. And so one day I was paying the bills. Now we didn't have online back then. And so what I would do is I would write the check first, and then I would set the check, the tithe check, and then I would settle over the side, and then I would pay the bills. But I'd always write the tithe check first and set it over the side and then take it with me to church. By the way, for you young people, we used to have pieces of paper called checks. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I said, Lord, side. So I'm paying the bills, and Josh came in, and I'm watching him out of the corner of my eye. And he's reading this tithe check, and he sees the amount, which to a, a young boy looks like a lot of money. And he says, Dad, why are you giving so much to the church? And I remember this scripture, when your son asks you, this is what you tell him. And I took Josh and I actually set him on my lap and I said to him, I need to tell you something about daddy that you don't know. But daddy wasn't always a Christian son. And daddy was a very bad man. And daddy was in bondage. But God, with a mighty hand, redeemed your daddy and gave us everything we have now. Therefore, I gladly give to God the first of all the mountains. My father, before he met my mother, he didn't know Christ. He was divorced. Uh, my mom, our family, and we just grew up in so much bondage from drug addiction to confusion. I remember growing up, when we gave our life to Jesus, my parents would tithe. And I almost had the same experience except on the opposite end. Why are we serving? Why are we giving? And mom and dad saying the same thing. If you knew what God brought us from, if you knew who we would be, if, if you knew where we were, we gladly give God the first because we have you. My dad said, I have your mom. My old life it was what it was, but I'm a new creation. And today, there's no, there's no pressure. There's no, there's no guilt. There's no shame. You don't have to make up your tie. There, there's nothing like that. This is an opportunity for you. Our church is, is fine. But like, we don't have any debt. We're in a good place. This is for you. This is for you to change the world. This is for you to change your family. This is for you to break generational cycles. It's for you. It's for you to worship. Some of us, we're not going to start tithing, but I want to encourage you to start somewhere. But for the rest of us that should need to, are ready to, 
I dare you to do it for three months and come back to me. If you do it faithfully, come back to me and let's talk about it. If God has not provided all your needs according to his riches and glory, I'm loud, I might have the conversation and refund you if God doesn't take care of it. I mean business and so does God. We're going to receive our offering now and I know many of you will get paid later on and try this next week and so forth. But if you feel led to give today, you can text 77977. You can give through our app, through the buckets. As the offering buckets pass you, you can stand as we continue to worship. Can I pray for you and for us? Come on, church. Port Richmond at home. Father, thank you for what you're doing in our life. We love you. How can we not? How can we not? trust you and give back. You have our heart. Touch us. Help us change our city in Philadelphia as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give.